2 Kings chapter 4, verse 38. And Elijah came again to Gilgal, and there was a dearth in the land. Dearth. Look at that word, dearth. You take off the R, you got death. You take off the D, you got earth. It's death in the earth. There's nothing living. There's no produce. There's no life. This is worse than a famine. There's dearth in the land. And the sons of the prophets, they keep showing up, been showing up, were sitting before him, Elijah. He said to his servant, set on a great pot, not just a pot, a great pot, and seed pottage for the sons of the prophets. All right, get yourself a big pot. We're going we're gonna to have a stew. We're going to have a chowder. We're going to feed. And one went out of the field, field the type of the world, to gather herbs. His main thing is to grab herbs. And a lot, vast uh, number of different types of herbs. He found a wild vine. Jesus speaks of the vile wine, vine that's been grafted in is us, the Gentiles. But he found a, a wild vine. And gathered thereof wild gourds, his lap full. That gourds is the only time gourds, plural. Now there's a gourd in Jonah, but that's singular. Wild gourds. Lap. That's the first time lap shows up. So he goes out there. He's looking for herbs. He finds a wild vine. And on it are gourds. And there are some to say that this type of gourd, if it's so, it would be very poisonous. And came and shred, that's the first, last, only time that word shows up, shred, them into the pot of porridge. For they knew not them, for they knew them not. So here's this big pot, it's cooking. This guy goes out there, he's looking for herb. He finds his gourd, and he shreds them, puts them in the pot. Now, whether they didn't know that gourd that he had was poisonous, or they didn't know that he was putting these gourds in the pot. But they're poisonous. And what we learn by this is one kills the whole pot. One sin will ruin a whole congregation. One sin makes us a sinner. That moment we don't think about when, when, we, when you deal with people. Oh, I'm perfect. I'm a good person. I'm that time that you lied or stole from your parents made you a sinner whether you be four or five years old. And even still, I, I, and you got to think about this, I've heard messages, when that baby cries for attention and there's nothing wrong, that is, think of me, think of me, you're a sinner. But let's look at a time that you know you stole that cookie. You know you broke that lamp. And you told mom or dad, it wasn't me. I didn't do it. Or no, and you did. That one sin. And you could be 50, 60, 70 years old. That one sin. You're a sinner. Now you have to be justified by God. And the only justification is by Jesus Christ. Your good works don't do it. This guy could have said, okay, I got wild gourds. Oh, let me get some cinnamon. Let's get some uh, uh, minced onion. Let's get some pepper. That's not going to do nothing for this, this chowder that's been poisoned. And there are going to be other people, well, not in this story, but there are usually other people who are going to suffer from that sin. Had Elijah not stepped in, like I said, we're reading advance of the thing. Had not Elijah stepped in, they would have all probably died. They ate this. If not, most of them. And they knew not. This guy had no idea what he grabbed. There was no idea what he put in the pot. Sin affects everyone around you. A VD passed from, from, from a couple can pass on to the children. Alcoholism passes on to the children. Smoking passes on to the children. Gambling passes on to the children. It's not just you that's suffering and losing money. Your wife is losing money. Your children are losing out. So they poured out for the men to eat. All right, It's boiled. It's ready. Get the bowls. And it came to pass as they were eating. 
They they got the forks and they got the spoons. As they were eating of the pottage, that they cried out and said, Oh, thou man of God, Elijah, there is death in a pot. Now think about the controversy you would have had right there in that moment. Think about, we just had Thanksgiving, Christmas is coming up. It's a holiday. Everybody's at the table, all the family. What would you do with all those things? Oh, no, this food is poisonous. That would cause a stir. That would cause people to start trying to vomit. Start to spit out what's in their mouth. And it's reminded of a story that this rich woman, she had her friends come over. She had servants. She had, you know, the, the luxuries. They're all sitting at the table. And she, they pull out the, this can of food and they're like, there's a little past expiration. What do we do? I mean, this is the only thing we got. Can't go to the store and get some. And, and the servant says, well, why don't we give some to the cat and see what happens to the cat? So, all right. So they give some to the cat. And they watch it and, well, okay, nothing happens to the cat. So, okay, go ahead and use it. And they cook it up and the meal's going on. And, and the servant comes running there. My God, the cat's dead. And he'll call the ambulance, get everybody to the hospital, start pumping their stomachs. And later, even the woman goes, well, you know, where, where's the cat? She goes, oh, out by the road where she was hit. Such a destruction, such a, a, a thing when you've got death in the pot, whether it be, you know, you think it's there or it's here. Somebody has picked up a morsel. Somebody has examined that chowder while they're eating, and then there's death. Don't try this in a restaurant as a joke. Don't be sitting there saying, oh, man, this food is poison. You're going to end up with a lawsuit. But the characteristics of the story is there is death in the pot. Death in the pot, and they could not eat thereof. They've already eaten. Oh, you tell me I'm a sinner, I'm, I'll sin no more. I don't care. You've already eaten sin. You've already dined on sin. Just because you stop eating. If they stop eating, it's like... Well, the poison is working. It's going through the bloodstream or whatever that poison does. It's going through the digestive system as you're sitting there. And you put the spoon down, you put the fork down, and you wipe your face with the napkin. Oh, it's already. It, you, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to stop. And there are some people, I guarantee at that table, they stop eating. But, oh, that just tastes. That just tastes. There's someone there probably still eating. Risk, maybe there's none of those gourds in, in my plate. I was fishing around for the gourds. Remember, he shredded them. And you think about, I think when I look at the word shred, I think of shredded cheese. How are you going to tell that cheese? I think about with a salad, you get the shredded carrots. How are you going to take those little carrots out of there? It's been put into the pot. And this has been cooked, so the juices have The juices, out. yeah. So, sin. This picture is sin. But he said, this would be Elijah, then bring meal. Bring some meal. And he cast it into the pot and said, pour out for the people that they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. That's miraculous. That is something that Elijah never done. This is something Elijah's done. There was no poison for Elijah to say, you know, okay, we're going to do it. And here's this double portion of Elijah. Here is a meal that is noxious made pure. And it, it pictures sin. And Elijah, a type of Jesus Christ. I'm the one that can take care of this. And not today, not by a meal that can save you, but by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the actions of Jesus. And like you said last night, with God telling Moses to put the branch in the water. Yeah. Yep. That water was bitter. Throw it in there. Now it's sweet. So there's an interesting thing right there with sin. 
And there came a man from Baal. That's Baal. That's the worship of Baal. That's remember, cities were given to a deity. Baal is, is the, the god. He's usually the sun god, the major god, or he's a he's a god of crops. Baal Shashua, that brought the man of God, Elijah, giving specifically to the man of God bread of the first fruits. 20 loaves of barley. Now, that 20 is an interesting number in the Bible. I don't know what it is, but that's an interesting number. When the children of Israel were numbered in the book of Numbers, 20 years old and upward. There's a lot with 20. So here's barley. Barley is that, you know, grain, you, you know, least. Barley also shows up in the book of Ruth. Barley was also the bread that Jesus took. Barley loaves and dispersed to 5,000 people, 4,000 people with two fishies. And full ears of corn in the husk thereof. Now, that's not the corn that North America knows. That's not the corn that we go to the store and get on the cob. This corn would be wheat, barley, anything that's husk of that family. In the Middle East right now, where we are, there's no mention, nothing known of that corn that you find on the cob. You get canned corn. That was of the Native Americans had that. And it wasn't to Columbus and all that when they came over here that they brought it back to the land. So that's not our corn. That is a reference to grains. Barley, full ears of corn. And that again, that's not the ears of corn that we know. That's the full horse. Have you ever seen a picture of a husk of wheat? So you would have to do what the apostles did. You would grab it and you would have to rub it in your fingers to get the grain. So it's first fruits. It's just been picked. It's as fresh as it can be. So this guy didn't bring stuff that was left over for, for Elijah. He brought, hey, give me some of that stuff you just picked. I'm bringing it to Elijah. Full ears of corn in the husk. That would also have the, um, I can't think of what's called now, but the, the waste. And he said, give unto the people that they may eat. Now look at that. That's exactly what Jesus said. We, we, we got, you know, little barley loaves. We got a couple of fishing. Jesus said, cause them to sit down and have them eat. Now we're seeing Elijah type. Of Jesus Christ. Elijah's going to feed 100 people here. Jesus is going to feed 5,000. He's going to feed 4,000. So. And we'll look at it in a moment. We'll look at it when we get there. The feeding of the 4,000. The feeding of the 5,000. Is not nothing new. That they, Oh what's going on here. That moment they should go back to where Elijah fed 100 people. With what? 20 loaves of barley. Christ did with a few loaves. And he said unto the servitor, that's the only place that word shows up, what should I set before a hundred men? <laughs> Isn't that what the disciples did? How are we going to feed all these people, Jesus? We're going to go run in town and get a hundred pennies worth of bread? We can't do it. He said, give the people that they may eat. For thus saith the Lord, thou shalt eat and shalt leave thereof. Now Jesus, when he fed the multitude, he told them, he said, go get the fragments. Go get the leftovers. And he filled 12 baskets. Elijah's like, all right, everyone dine and just leave it. <laughs> so he said it before them, and they did eat and left thereof. No one gathered. Well, I would assume somebody gathered up, but that's not in the story. According to the word of the Lord. So let's see Matthew 14, 20. A lot of times when we go through the Gospels, many a time, you may think, oh, wow, that's something new and adventurous. It's not. Matthew 14, 20. And by the teaching of the Old Testament, which the scribes and the Pharisees and Sadducees are supposed to do, this should have reminded their brains. 
At one point, the disciples, Matthew 14, 15, at somewhere in this point, they should say, you know what, this sounds familiar. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place. And the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go to the villages and buy themselves victuals, food. And Jesus said to them, they need not depart. Give ye them to eat. Now, now we're getting to what we just read. And they said to him, we have but five loaves and two fishes. He said, bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, blessed and drank and gave the loaves unto his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did eat and were filled, just like what we just read, and took up the fragments. That's the first time that word shows up. And there remained 12 baskets full. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. And you can find this in Mark chapter 6, Luke chapter 9, and John 6. This is one of them stories. It's all four Gospels. And it's in 2 Kings. So, feeding the five, I mean, I would think that this would be a great story amongst the religious leaders of, hey, look what Elijah can do. All right, Jesus matched him. Here's 100 people, 5,000, and then he did 4,000. Scribes and Pharisees should have known too by the Old Testament. Well, the, the thing is, the, the, the Pharisees and scribes, they knew it to a point, but the but Pilate says because of envy. Because of envy. They knew he came from Bethlehem, but they just didn't want to admit it. And when you read the story again, later on, the disciples come up, you know, they forgot about the 5,000. You come up to the 4,000, and somewhere along the line, shouldn't this come back into memory? And I have God worked in my life. Now, I'm not sure about others, but I have had stuff happen to me, and this is not monthly. This is not. This has been weekly. Something has happened to me in my life as a Christian. I'll go to church, and I will get that lesson. I'll get that event thrown right back in my face. I will be out doing something, witnessing to people. I'll be out in the public ministry. I'll be studying my Bible with my family, and then we go read something in the Bible. Boom, there it is again that night. And a lot of times, if you follow along with some of these messages, you'll say, you know, that's what we just read as a family. And I would, I guess I could say, would you safely assume all the times that Jesus took his disciples to temple, which he did, and he took them to uh, synagogue, which he did, you would think that maybe around that time that this message would come up, the disciples didn't get it. He told them, he says, hey, we're going to go to Jerusalem. They're going to they're going to spit upon me. They're going to abuse me. They're going to kill me. But three days and three nights, I'm coming up. And when he, they crucified him, when they beat him, when they done everything that he told them, three days and three nights later, the women are coming with spices to prepare for a dead body. Not a no, not one of them was looking for a live body. And when they came back and said, "Hey, we seen we seen the an angels," and he professed that Jesus is alive, and they thought it was his idle tales. But the events are here. So when the Jewish person, the Jewish person, when he gets to the tribulation period and it's happening. And it's present day news. Here it is in the word of God. It's there. You've been warned. It has been taught. And when you erase history. Let's say we get rid of the Bible. Let's say as a nation we do get rid of the Bible. But what are you going to learn? No one got the feeding 5,000, and no one went back to what we're reading today. I was able to go back and forth and show you. So, Elisha, type of Jesus Christ, Elisha, that double portion of things that has happened to him that did not happen to Elijah. 
Now, Elijah had food brought to him in a drought. He had a drought. There's a dearth here. But that was Elijah himself. He had the widow woman with the meal, okay? No one was poisoned. She was going to make two cakes and going to die. All right? All right, that's two people, as far as we know. At least two people. And you got a whole bunch of men sitting at this table, and Elijah has taken care of and given them life again. Not more than those two people that Elijah did. And I don't read anywhere where Elijah, Elijah, I'm getting it mixed up, has fed such a multitude as Elijah. And you can run that Elijah now. You can run it to Jesus Christ. So we see the Bible history. And we see it played out in Jesus. There's coming a time in the, in the tribulation period that those Jews, the remnant, are going to Revelation chapter 12. I don't know how this is going to happen, but if Elijah done it and Jesus has done it, I don't know how God's going to do it. Because no man might buy or sell unless he has the mark. And Revelation 12 Verse 14, and to the woman, that's Israel, were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness. There's nothing in the wilderness to eat. Remember the children in the, in the wilderness going to the promised land? Lord, we need water. Lord, we need water. Lord, we need water. Okay, thank you for the water. Lord, we need food. Lord, we need food. Lord, we need food. Okay, thank you for the food. Lord, we need water. Lord, we need water. We, history's coming back for the Jewish people. They're going into the wilderness. They're going to need food and water. It's not there. And the wilderness into her place. All right, I probably sell a preacher, but that's not our study. Which she is nourished for a time and times and half a time. That's three and a half years. From the face of the serpent. That serpent, the only way you're going to buy, the only way you're going to get anything, the only way you're going to get health care is you got to receive my mark in the tribulation period. And God comes up and tells the red men and the Jews, you run, you go. I got a place for you. I'm going to take care of you. All right, Elisha, 100 people. Jesus, 5,000, 4,000. Tribulation period. I can't give you, I don't know how many people are going to be there, but there's God doing it again. Now, when that Jew's in tribulation period, he's getting that manna. He can run back to, to uh, Exodus. He can run back to Numbers, the manna. Okay, that's fine. He can run back to Kings. Oh, there was a prophet that fed 100 people. And then, well, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, he did it. He did four thousand. He did nine thousand people, not counting women. It, there it is. As far as this in Revelation, it's history. It's history. But when it's present day, when it's happening in Jacob's trouble, and God is feeding him, Jesus did it, Elijah did it, and Moses did it. But not Elijah did not do that. But Moses and Elijah are going to show up. Elijah is an ambassador representative of the prophets. Maybe he'll say, hey, my counterpart, Elijah, he fed him, didn't he? I don't know. But history plays out all over again. Prophecy plays out history all again. If men do not learn one thing from history, they do not learn from history. The apostles proved that. Somebody should say, Jesus, you're God. Yes, I am. You're the Lord. Yes, I am. You're the Son of God. Yes, I am. You are the Word. Yes. This, you just fed 4,000. Yes. Show us something. I don't know where it is, but there's something like this in the Bible. And don't you think Jesus would know exactly the book, chapter, and number where it would be? Yeah, let me, no one ever said that to him. No one reminded him of the resurrections. Now, you couldn't go back and, and look at the leprosies because there's only one man that was healed, healed of leprosy, and that was Naaman, and he was a Gentile. There's no one in the Old Testament where evil spirits are cast out. But when you come across feeding multitudes of people, that's in the Old Testament. 
Because God fed the entire nation. And then John chapter 6 is all about God feeding with manna, but that's not the point. God, Jesus Christ. And how bad do you take John chapter 6? Well, now there's two religions out there, the Protestants and the Catholics. Well, that means you take the bread and it literally turns into Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ. And you have to eat and drink Jesus to get dirt. How did you get that mess? Let's go back and look at the, the Old Testament. Let's look at the history. Did any Jew ever chop somebody in half and begin to eat them? Where do you get this doctrine? Scripture with scripture, studying with studying. Elijah fed him, Jesus fed him, and there's coming a time in the, in the period in Jacob's trouble, God's going to feed him again. There it is. And I, people say, well, I don't read the Old Testament, then you're missing it. You're missing a lot. 